Hey guys, welcome to What Women Binge. We have a special episode. Amanda's counting right now because we're not sure if this is episode 99, 100, or 101, but she's counting right now so we can find out. So bear with us. We'll be right back after this uh, specially broadcast system. What? What do you say? <laughs> Welcome to the episode. Hi. Hi. You were counting. You were really yes, in it. Yes, I counted to. You counted to 100? Because this is our 100th episode. High five. We've done 100 Look of these. We did. Look at us. <laughs> One day I was like, hey girl, want to do a podcast? And she was like, okay, I'll decorate the studio. And I was like, great, I'll be there. <laughs> and here we and are. here we are. 100 episodes 100 later. episodes. We did it. We really should throw a party. We could throw a 100th episode party with all of our friends. I think I'm going to do it. That's a good idea. I'm going to throw a party. Let's do I it. I love a party. I love a party. Should we invite people? Listeners? We should invite all of our former guests. <gasps> all the guests. Yeah, all the guests. Most of them are Nashville anyway. We have all our... Should we, we hold the Nash villain party? The Nash villain. And everybody has to come as a party. villain. <laughs> Why did we not think about this before the 100th episode, by the way? It's fine. It's fine. We can do it. I, I love do the, my I best can, work under pressure. I see your brain reeling right now. We have I'm to, doing are we, We're doing it after the holidays though, right? Yeah. We have too many holiday parties. We, I have an ugly sweater coming up that's taking up all of my brain space. Yeah, yeah. I'll plan it for This is going to be good. Um, we have so much to talk about today. Should we just dive right in? The strike is over. The strike has Praise ended. Me. I mean, technically a week ago, but here we are. This is our first episode since the strike ended. Though. And we are allowed to talk about stuff. And we dressed appropriately. You did. Because we've been waiting for this day. You're Barbie. All I'm summer. Ken. You're I'm Knuff. You're Knuff for me. I'm a Knuff. I'm Knuff for you. You're Knuff for me. I have been singing that song in my head all week. I'm, I'm just Ken. Because you know what? Because that belt side be a ten. Did you see the SNL with Pete Davidson? No. He does a, I'm just Pete. And so oh, it's gosh. really funny. You need to watch that. I that need to watch one. that. Yeah. Even if you just watch that part. Um, I loved the Barbie movie. I know you did. I saw it twice. I fell asleep in the first one. Don't kill me. I fell asleep for a little while because it really lost me when they get brainwashed. Oh, yeah. I yeah. was confused about that. Okay. Uh, like full disclosure. And I know people out there are going to hate me for saying this. I did like it better the second time. I do want to watch it a third time. But I felt like Greta, Greta Gerwig is, God love her. I mean, number one movie, like. I know. God love her. But. Kicking booty. Her stuff is very complicated. Like when she did Little Women, I wasn't a fan because I couldn't figure out which did time period. Did you see Lady we Bird? Were. Yes. Lady Bird's a little. Like they're all a little confusing. They're not my favorite stories. They're beautiful. They're well cast. Yes. They're confusing. And so Barbie, I wanted it. To, okay, here's the thing. I think I wanted it to be like Elf. You know, how Elf is so simple. He's actually a human, lives in the elf world, elf world, comes to the human world, doesn't realize where he belongs. Um, that's a little bit like what I wanted from Barbie. That simplistic, beautiful, fun, imaginative, don't have to think too hard. I ended up being like, wait, what? Like, there was just so much to it. See, I kind of feel the opposite. I feel like it was very simple. Really? Yeah. Like, I didn't dive too deep. I was like, this is amazing. Yeah, no, it was. This is it was happy visual, but it's real. Like I love that she came out of her shoes and was like still on her toes and oh, that kind so of thing. Cute. And well, and I laughed my tail off. Oh yeah, I, I mean it was so funny. The jokes were so smart too. Do you think so it was relatable? more Ken's movie than Barbie? I feel like it should have been called Ken. I think he had a better arc. I think he was funnier. I think he had more to play with. I think Barbie was a little. I mean, she was supposed to be a little bit of a Debbie Downer because she's having an existential crisis, but mm -hmm. it wasn't a funny existential crisis. Like, it wasn't like Bridesmaids existential No, but I think, it, I think the reason why it was important for it to be Barbie's story is because, yes, she's a Barbie doll, but this, like, world that she's suddenly thrust into and suddenly realizing, like, the men— I mean, like, that's so relatable to yeah. every woman out yeah. there, which is exactly what Barbie's supposed to be. Exactly. And that's if true. you never see Barbie in that light, you think, oh, well, she's just this little perfect thing who can be anything, and there's no conflict in Barbie land. Well, it's funny, because everyone loves Barbie, but we also all hated Barbie for the reason we couldn't be Barbie. Like, you know, I was oh, never I tall never enough hated or skinny Barbie. enough. No, but, like, I can never be skinny <laughs> enough or tall enough or, you know, wear high heels like that. I you compare? I never compared myself to Barbie. I'm not that girl. I I know that that probably does exist. I don't. I don't know that I really. I think I did on some level, but not. not I just not like too. I didn't. I didn't diagnose it like too or carefully. Like I lived dissected Barbie land in my brain. Like I played with Barbies until like 
it would be embarrassing if I admitted. Well, the only reason I don't have them still is because my dad threw them away when we left, when my mom divorced him. Which makes my heart really I had 150. Guys, I got paid in Barbie dolls when I... Um, when I worked and, uh, that was my payment was I got a Barbie doll and, uh, you know, and then it put food on the table, but like I got a Barbie doll. That was my thing. And so my basement was full of them. And I, the way I got my dream mansion, did I ever tell you how the I S- got my dream mansion? SNL, right? SNL. I was on SNL and, uh, it was a scene called Santa the Terminator because the movie The Terminator had just come out. And, uh, Jim Belushi comes down the chimney as Santa and blows it up with like an Uzi. And, like, blows up all my toys. And the only thing that really survived that set was that didn't explode. I'm hiding behind the sofa or something. Um, and uh, this dream house, this Barbie dream house, survived the the massacre. And at the end of the day, they were like, do you want to take it home? And I was like, can I? So I got a Barbie yes, dream mansion from that. I still have my original Barbie dream house from the early 90s. I think it's, like, the 80s edition. But wait a second. Okay, so in the movie, she has a slide. Did you have a slide? I had an no. elevator. Mine, I didn't have the ele- No, that's the that's the next version oh. of the Barbie Dream House. So I had the 80s one with the balcony on the front, and it's like three pieces that slide together. Yeah. That's I thought mine was the same, but it had a... Mine never I had, had a elevator. different house with an elevator. I remember pulling a little string, and you'd mm-hmm. stick them in it, and they would go up. And I was like, well, where's that part? Also, the thing I was missing was her ring. You know, like Barbie always had... I feel mm-hmm. like she always, at least the ones I had. She had on her giant ring. Did she have a ring on? Yeah. But there's always a hole. You were always missing the ring. The ring was never there. So there's a hole in your hand. Weird Barbie might have had a hole. I didn't notice. Oh, maybe. We should I don't think closer. any of them had a hole. I was kind of missing that. That's kind of cool. If it yeah. did, that would have been a good detail. But I did love Ken. I loved Ryan Gosling. Um, I did not love, is it Meryl Streep? Who did the voiceover, the narration? Oh, no. Uh, what's her name? The British one. Uh, Brain's not in my brain Dane, today. The Dane, Dana uh, um, Smith. Um, uh, no. Bleh. Anyway, her. She, uh, there was one part where I she loved says, her. oh no, I loved, I loved the narration at the beginning and the end, but it, they did this one thing that takes you out of the movie where they, they said, uh, she said, um, a note to the cast Casting, directors, if yeah. you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna talk about, um, Helen Mirren, oh, Helen Mirren, if you're gonna take, uh, if you're gonna talk about, today. if you're gonna talk about cellulite, don't hire Margot Robbie or something, mm-hmm. but you can't do that one time in a movie. You have to do that like three, four I times. I thought that was hilarious. If you're going to take us, yeah, but I, I don't know. That and then the last line I know was hilarious, but I also was like, wait, but does she have one or does she? Yes. I don't want to spoiler alert a human. it. So she, so she's, it's her first time at the gyno. Yes, but you think she's going to her, for, we're spoiling everything. Yeah, I'm but so I think everybody, sorry, if everybody hasn't seen it yet, tough luck. <laughs> uh, so no, the very last scene in the movie, which I think is the most brilliantly played joke in the whole thing. So th- when they first come into the real world, they encounter these construction workers and they're like cat calling at Barbie and Ken. And she's like, uh, just so you know, like I don't have a vagina and he doesn't have a penis. Like we don't have genitalia at all. (laughs) And so she's clarifying, we are Barbies. Like there is nothing there. We're dolls. And then at the end of the movie, when she's become a human, you think she's off to her first day of work and they're like dropping her off and she's like dressed for in work. Suit. She's got her little like she's briefcase purse Barbie. bag and she walks in the door of this office building. She walks up to the front desk and she tells them her name and she's like, I'm here to see my gynecologist. Yeah. And it's like, it's, funny. it's just the perfect ending. It is funny. But and I was like, wait. Does she, or is she getting one made? I didn't understand. No, she, she became a human. She made the choice. Okay, you need to watch it again. It's it's like Splash, where they but at the end of Splash, spoiler alert, movie from like 1986, <laughs> uh, Tom Hanks decides to become a mermaid instead. I just I died. Mermaid. I've never related to anything so much as like, obviously I don't have teenage daughters yet, but you know as your kids get older and they don't want they don't ask you to play as much anymore. Yeah, and the things that you used to do all the time, and you know. Sometimes you'd find excuses to get out of. Yeah. Suddenly, like, you're really missing it. And well, and America Ferreira. Oh, amazing. Is amazing. Her speech about, I'm supposed to be this, but I have to be that. And I'm supposed to be this, but I have to be that. And I mean, that was uh, like, we could we could go through that whole oh. scene. But I bet people are going to be doing that scene in acting classes for brilliant, like in perpetuity, like forever yes. and ever. But I just, there's the point where they talk about the um, depression Barbie. And oh. I. It was like she, you know, depression Barbie. She is laying in bed all day and then eats her eats an entire bag of Starburst. And, you know, and I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't know whether to laugh because I feel seen and I relate or if I should like cry a little because that's normal. 
Ooh. Well, it was, it was I did like it, and I'm trying to get Mark to watch it because I want his pers- – he's so afraid of it. He's like, why would I watch it? I didn't play with them when I was a kid. Why would I watch it? I'm like – It's amazing. Because he's I like, it's just going to make fun of men. I'm like, no, it's no, not. My son watched it and loved it. He's yeah, 11. I know a lot of men that watched it and loved it because it's funny. Now, I will say Brain did not love it. Really? He thought it was funny. He enjoyed it as a movie. Did he think it was too complicated like I did? Yes. He, he has a very similar view to it. Yeah. I wanted it to be. I and mean, he Barbie loves Greta simple. Gerwig. Like every, he loved Lady Bird. He yeah, loved. I don't Little know. Bird. Her stuff always so. like rubs me a little bit. Um, and I hate to say that because I'd love to work for you someday, Greta. But <laughs> <laughs> She's but she, brilliant. And she, yeah, she hires the best people. She's really great with casting and camera work and, and, and just, you know, puts a lot of thought into it. But it's like almost a little. I have to do a little too much thinking in some of her movies where I'm like, I just want to sit back and enjoy it. I just, I did really enjoy it. And the soundtrack has been on repeat in my house. My girls, we, it never ends. It is not on repeat in my house. Well, Although me and my babysitter did make the boys listen to Ken the other day because we thought that was fun. Oh, I'm just Ken. We, it, we, we were like, you have to hear this got nominated for, um. Grammy? Yes, a Grammy. It? Yes, no it way. did. So that's really fun. I Jelly bet it, Roll. Jelly Roll got did nominated. It? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, and he found out while he was performing last night at where was he? Anyway, he was doing something big. He's and, doing all oh, these he, benefits the CMAs, around town. It was during the CMAs. Oh, okay. During his CMA, like when they announced that he was nominated Aww. for a Grammy or two. Yeah, so that's, that's great. so special. He's a sweet guy. Um, uh, let's talk about. Um, oh, real quick. Christmas is coming. The goose <gasps> is getting is fat. Coming. Please put a penny in the old man's hat. You know the song, right? No. If you haven't got a penny, a half penny will do. If you haven't got a half penny, then God bless you. No? Okay, anyway. No. Christmas is coming. Put a penny in his hat. I want to talk about charity real quick. <laughs> okay, let's do it. <laughs> so I'm wearing a Be Humane sweatshirt. This was given to me by my lovely um, friend who works at the Humane Society, Nashville Humane Society. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I you know, it's the season for giving and helping. And I just, I think that a great gift this year would be if you wanted to adopt or foster a pet. They really need fosters. Not even adoption. They need fosters. And on top of that, if you want to not foster or have a pet in your house, you can always donate. You can donate your pet's old stuff. You can donate money to help support them. You can buy a bag of dog food and bring it down. You know, I think they have a wish list on their website. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And you can follow their adorable Instagram page, any any Humane Society in any town, not just Nashville Humane Society. but um, Save the pets. Save the pets. Or I think it's Nashville Humane Association because it's an A at the end. But um, also World Vision. So, you know, I love my World Vision and we did a whole episode about my Africa yes. trip. But this is the bracelet that I um, it's beautiful. am the, uh, I don't know, the owner of this year, I guess I would say. So in the gift catalog, the gift catalog is out now. You helped like. So I choose the gift that I want out, to represent. Right? So yeah. this was made by artisans in Africa. It's Can called the it? Beads of Blessing. And uh, it's uh, it's made by artisans in Africa. But then the money that you, when you buy it for a friend, you can give the friend the gift. But then the money goes to um, not only support the artisans that made it, but also to support World Vision. But the gift catalog is out and you can get like, I mean, I might buy you a whole nativity of animals, Amanda. Uh, yes, I please. might buy a cow, a goat and a donkey for a family in Guatemala. But really, you know, but I'm giving it to you as a gift. But they're getting the gift. That would be the greatest thing ever, by the Not way. Not fun. Yes. Like one year Taylor Sprite. Don't buy me a Christmas present. Do that. That's I love that. And that's what I, I do for like teacher. When you don't know what to get like a teacher or like for me, it's like my agent is always like, oh, what do I get? So I always like get some chickens or medical supplies. You can do it domestic. Are you camels can camels an option. I think camels are an option. I think that's part of the nativity. Yeah. Send somebody a camel. Oh my gosh, that would be so fun. That would be so yeah. cool. Um, but it's usually ones that you can like breed or make milk or, you know, get yeah. eggs from. But um, uh, you can do school supplies, medical supplies, all that stuff. I love going through the gift catalog and just kind of like circling what I'm going to get everybody. It's the first thing I do every season. So it's a good time to do it right now. Giving Tuesday is coming up in a few days. I love that. I'll be in New York for Giving Tuesday with World Vision talking about the gift catalog and my beads of blessing. Check it out, you guys. It's worldvision.org. Um, and I think it's like backslash gift catalog. But my phone keeps ringing. I hope mine there's too. not like a I emergency. know is there's a big alert. I don't think so. Um, oh, so uh, while we're in Christmas, yeah, you have a Christmas movie coming out. Isn't that the weirdest thing you've ever said? Yes, because I don't have a Christmas movie I coming out. A, I have a Christmas movie <laughs> coming out. And I don't. Out. Everybody um, in the world does right now except me. That's the weirdest thing ever. So I'm not an actress, but I did play a small role. But you play one on TV. Just kidding. <laughs> Um, but I, I, well, I basically played myself. My, my character's name is Amanda. She's a weather girl. <laughs> and I get to have this like epic temper tantrum. It's the greatest thing ever. 
It's really did funny. Did you throw anything? Yes, I you did. You did? I yes. can't wait to see it. was see really it. fun. Tell us what it's called. So it's called Jingle Smells. Where it, can we find it? Thanksgiving Day, which is like this week. Uh, like tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> um, it comes out on Rumble, um, which is like a kind of like a YouTube situation. Um, very similar. And you can find it there. I think, I don't remember how much it cost. I want to say $25. Don't quote me. $19.99. Ah. Thanks, Pseudo Under Brain. Under 20 Um. Yeah, and it's family friendly. The whole family can tell watch us it. who's in it. Oh gosh, and give us the log line. The cast is so fun. So it's John Schneider. Um, oh gosh, who I worked with in Christmas in Tune. He yes, was the, he played Reba's husband, ex husband, in and Christmas. He is like dreamy all around. Not only is he just so handsome, but he is charming and he is kind. And he was so sweet to my kids, who were also in the movie. <laughs> um, there's there's a lot of seculos in that movie. <laughs> so keep your eyes filled. You'll see them. All the peeps. Um, Eric Roberts is in it. Um, Brad Stein. Uh, Victoria Jackson. I'm leaving out so many uh, because my yeah. brain is fried. Oh, Jacqueline Stapp, our friend. Who, oh, yeah. Jacqueline um, plays a news girl. She is a entertainment news anchor, and she is Phenomenally hilarious. Uh, fun fact, her husband, Scott Stapp, is the lead singer of Creed. Yes. And they live here in Nashville, and we're trying to get them on, but he's a little shy. Yes, but she's... But she's funny. She's great. Yeah. She's hilarious. Oh, and this guy, James Storm, who I'm pretty sure is going to be, like, a super famous actor one day. He actually... I know him from wrestling. Oh. <laughs> which is a crazy crossover, but he plays one of the main characters, and he is amazing and so funny and... So it's about, what okay. tell us what it's about. Synopsis here. Um, this former, uh, or veteran, basically, um, comes back and has some issues upon re-entry and is trying to get his legs back under him. He's gotten in trouble with the law and he just, he needs a job. So his dad, who's also the police chief in this town, John Schneider, uh, gets him a job with his buddy who owns a sanitation company. Mm. And chaos ensues. Basically, they get contracted to get rid of some toys for a superstar that had been canceled. Oh. And it's Christmas time, and they feel like that is a total waste of these toys when there's kids in need. And you can kind of guess where things go from here. <laughs> they deliver the toys. Maybe, maybe not. So it becomes a little uh, Saint you'll, Nick. You'll have to watch and find out. All right, I will. Uh, jingle it, Smells jingle on Rumble. Jingle Smells on Rumble. It's going to be really cute. And I, I mean, I'm I'm just proud to have been a part of yeah, it. Yeah, that's And fun. it's something, I mean, it was kind of a motley crew that got together and created this thing during the strike, um, because it, we were kind of nervous there weren't going to be Christmas movies. So it was independently funded and produced and no studios involved. So all these people got to work and keep food on their tables. And it was a great thing. Awesome. Yeah. Well, during the strike, I had a movie come out that I did not get to promote. Uh, yes. It was on Lifetime called Would You Kill For Me? The Mary Bailey Story, which funny enough, I thought was a Christmas movie when I got the script or heard the title <laughs> because I was like, Mary Bailey is George Bailey from It's a Wonderful Life's Wife. Oh, like is this? Like, I never thought about that. So I, I was only told it was called the Mary Bailey story. I was not told that it was called Would You Kill for Me until a little bit later. And then I was like, wait a second, what? Or is this like a weird, weird twist on It's a Wonderful Life? But um, no, Mary Bailey is, and I met her, and uh, she's fantastic. Um, what a woman! But she um, wrote a book, and this is based on her story, and it's about a young girl, Mary Bailey, who um, is being abused by her stepfather. And uh, and what happens? And it's the it's three different points of view. So I play the grandmother of Mary mm -hmm. Bailey, and then there's Veronica, who's my daughter, and then there's Mary, who's my granddaughter. And uh, it spans about twelve years. So she's it's when she's born, when Mary's born, to when she's twelve, and her stepfather dies. And it's sort of who who done it in mm -hmm. a way, but it's also like I finally got to watch it. You did? Yes. It's I actually I didn't know the story. Yeah. Already. So some people do because this was like a big, big headline in the it, 80s. I knew that it was a popular story, but I did not personally know it. And so I watched it. It was a very entertaining movie. It's I interesting was, because it's told from three different perspectives, right? Yeah. And I, it's beautifully shot. I mean, even yeah. for being like. Well, it was like single. I mean, we we shot it fast and furious and kind of like we had we had trouble with like keeping the crew around and, and where we and it was rainy every day in Ottawa. And um, but it was really it was really the, the cast, I think, was fantastic. Um, I think the performances came across, uh, but it was it was a tough one for sure for me to film. Um, you had to go to some dark places for that one. I did. We we had we spent a lot of days crying, which yeah. um, when I do these Christmas movies, you don't have to do. <laughs> so all um, I really knew about it when you went into it was that you were playing a grandma, 
I know you gave and me so a grandma I sent her with mug. A grandma mug from my birthday. So if you guys saw me on Instagram with my grandma mug, that was from Amanda. Mm-hmm. That was my 47th birthday gift. And now we know that and you I can rock pull it all off the time. Brown hair. I d- yeah, it was very. We went like I went to my hairdresser and said, "Give me the mousiest brown color you can give me." And it still looked great. And she did. So. Well, it washed out a little bit. It washed out kind of nicely, but I, like we didn't cut it, so I had all these scraggly ends. I hadn't had Botox in like a year, so I was like, you "All know. right, we'll see how rough I can look and how you know." And we barely had any makeup on. It was like, I mean, the the wardrobe was very kind of loose fitting, um, very grandma ish, really. I mean, but it was. I, I was on the edge it was of my seat the entire time. Yeah. And since I didn't know the story, I didn't know how it was going to play when out. When I was in getting texts from friends when it was on saying, like, oh my gosh, you're such a bitch in this. And then later on, they were like, oh, wait, things just switched. Uh-huh. Or, you know, so like the now stories, I, yeah. depending on who's telling the stories, you know, whose everyone perspective. Everyone has a different and, perspective. Well, and the thing is, everyone thinks of themselves as a victim. Like when I, when I do these stories, I really dive into like psych, the psychiatry behind certain people and things. And like the last one I did about the hoarder, Dirty Little Secret, um, was me diving into hoarding behavior and what that means. And this one was about um, domestic abuse. And mm-hmm. I'd never really played that. I'd never really experienced that. So right. having to learn about domestic abuse and abuse cycles and things like that. So it was a, it was really interesting, though. And it really does get you to a, not a dark place because we, as a cast, we were doing puzzles backstage and having fun together and going on excursions on the weekend. Like the, the uh, beautiful girl who played my daughter in it um we went away to like spa weekends and stuff Mm -hmm. so we had some fun together as a cast and we would go shopping and lunches and stuff one night we got done at six in the morning and by 8 a.m we met for brunch like we went home and took a quick shower and nap and met each other we were like want to go to brunch and we were like if we don't go to brunch we're not gonna be able to wake up on monday morning so we have to go to brunch on sunday morning oh because we got done at 4 a.m on sunday you know that would not have happened or 6 a.m yeah it was like the sun was coming up and we were like brunch with the inside of my eyelids but I was like, well, let's just do it. If you're going to go, I'll go. And then we're like, all right, you go. Connor, who played uh, my son-in-law, my abusive son-in-law, who's actually so charming and lovely. Actually, I just got a text from him saying, wait, here, let's see what Connor says. Hold on. Olivia, was uh, who played Veronica. And then Presley was a little girl who played um, Mary. And they were all so how talented kids, and so lovely. So how oh, old was she? She is about, I would think she's 12. Okay, so she's a little bit older than I thought she was. Yeah, she's... Well, there were there were different ages of Mary. There was a younger version, like an eight year old oh, okay. version. Do those kids like know the story? Because that's got to be super traumatizing. She got, for a I kid mean, she, Presley like... is a very. You're going to see her in the future. She is a really talented young girl, and uh, Presley Allred is her name, and she is like really talented, really amazing, and she um, got really into it. And it was like looking at her crying made me cry. Like mm-hmm. we and this girl was in like she's being shoved around. She's being grabbed by the arm by Connor. Like he's being as That's gentle as he I, can. But like yeah. we were kind of like all roughing each other up, like getting thrown around and right. stuff and getting hit and knocked around and shoved into each other and walls and stuff. And but we were just like in it. And then we go upstairs and giggle over a puzzle. But Connor wrote, I hope you're doing well. I finally got a chance to watch our movie. You were fantastic. I actually had dinner with my grandparents, and my grandfather's exact words were, that was a real real great performance, but that grandmother was superb. Really nice job. <laughs> the grandmother. That's me now. I'm You're known the as grandma. the grandmother. I got to write well, that to Connor. I, Thank I, you, Connor. I did and think your y'all did a great job on it. And oh. I, But I, the kids, the the children affected me the most. I was like, oh, my it's gosh. It's really like, dark. Yeah. And how do you boy explain you a role like that to a child? The little boy, I don't think, really got it. But, I mean, he was in it with us, like, crying. We had one scene that lasted six hours. And we were like, I finally kind of went to... Mm-hmm. You know, production was like, I think we need to, like, stop doing this with the kids. It's getting because it really does take a toll on you. Yeah. Our eyes were all dried out and, you know, we're all sniffling like crazy. Plus, the house was really dusty and dirty. It was kind of gross. And we were like already sneezing and stuff. And we're it's rainy out and we're all shoved in this small house together. And it was still cold in Ottawa. And mm-hmm. it, so it was just like miserable conditions. Like my my dressing room was dirty. And then the Ooh. mud, the the. The trailer broke, and so the sewage was seeping out, and, like, the smell. I was like, oh, no. This is just, the food was bad. It was, like, the worst production. We were like, there's no relief from anything, from the weather, from the from the smells, from the, like, you, you're not even having a good meal. Like, it was like, Ugh. That's when you Postmates it. Yeah, well, I didn't know if I could in Ottawa. A lot of your things don't work. Like, I had to VPN my, all my, oh, that's like, true. my Hulu didn't work your there. And stuff, you know, so... Yeah, but we but luckily we had a lot of fun with the cast. But you guys can check it out. It's called Would You Kill For Me on Lifetime. So um, hopefully. I think there are some re-airs. I've asked them for scheduled. dates and they have not told me. So. I DVR'd it, but um, I think 
I bet if you put it in in your own. Yeah, and there's a Philo app for like, if you're looking at that right now for Lifetime Hallmark Christmas movies, uh, you should check out, I think it should be on there. Amanda, it's holiday season. It is. You know what that means? It means shopping. I love shopping. And I feel like I'm almost done with my holiday shopping because of the Skims holiday gift shop. It has made things so easy. So much easier, I right? I may or may not have bought myself some stocking stuffers for the brain to put in my stocking. There you go. You have to do it. I mean. Sometimes you have to buy your own gifts. And then you know what? If you buy it early enough, you forget that you even got it. And then it's a surprise on the day. It's so great. And but the you know, Skims holiday collection is mwah. Chef's kiss. Yes, these co- these collections have been designed for the whole family. Skims is creating the next generation underwear, loungewear, and shapewear. Literally for every body, including men now, too. My favorite part of the holiday season is bundling up with the whole family for holiday card picks and cozy nights around the fire. So I got us all the matching loungewear from Skims. Ooh. Even the dog can get in on it. That's so cute. Isn't that fun? I personally got the um, pajama set for myself. In smoke, it's the sparkle print. It's Ooh, so yeah. comfortable. It nice. was really hard to put it back in the box and wrap it up. <laughs> That's awesome. Your favorite skim staples like Fits Everybody, Cotton, Soft Lounge, and Sleep are now available in cheerful colors and festive prints, you guys. And it's available in all sizes from XXS all the way up to 4X. And there's unisex styles, and they even start at newborn sizing in the children's size. And, and your dogs. Isn't and that your crazy? Dogs, the whole family. It's the best. So Skims makes holiday shopping so easy with styles for everyone in the family. And the Skims Holiday Gift Shop is the destination for all your gifting needs. Yeah, believe the hype. Skims has over 100,000 five-star reviews for a reason, people. And the Holiday Shop is open right now at skims.com. Plus, you get free shipping on orders over $75. After you place your order, be sure to let them know that we sent you. Select podcast in the survey and be sure to select what women binge in the drop-down menu that follows. Yeah, so don't forget skims.com. Go there for all your holiday shopping. And while you're in there, select podcast and let them know that we sent you WWB, What Women Binge. Oh, I also went to see another movie that I was. Yeah, you did. I went to see The Birds. I don't remember why I couldn't go. There was something going yeah, on that night I couldn't go, but it was like a random Sunday night. I don't know night. if I'd wanted to anyway. Oh, The Birds is so good. It's one of my favorites because I watched it when I was directing Watcher in the Woods. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just looking for jump scares and I went to The Master, Alfred Hitchcock. That's where you go when you need to learn this. It was crazy watching it on a big screen. Uh, those effects really hold up. It was kind of crazy. Like the birds, they're real. They and apparently, I How? I I heard recently one of our friends who went with us to see it read an article that said the birds actually did it. The kids were afraid. The birds were like they got birds to like bite at their ears and stuff. And then like there, I think there were stuffed there were puppet versions. I and, remember briefly studying it in art school. Like we, it was a required watch, and but I don't remember. Any of that. I don't know how they got all the birds <laughs> on the wire. I, I mean, I don't think they had the CGI capability back then to actually create that. I mean, I know they did for some this of them is flying where in and stuff. The you brain could tell, would help us. Yeah, you sure. could tell that some of them were fake, but like a lot of it was real. And and there's this one scene. I love this one scene. I think it's the second scene in the diner when they're talking about the birds are going to come. The birds are attacking. And there's a woman there with her children and she's freaking out. But um, uh, Tippy Hendren is sitting at the countertop and there's an older woman there who's like a bird expert and she's like birds would never attack it'll never happen and then they come flying and then they the literally <laughs> someone comes in and is like oh my eye or whatever, right yeah but um but that scene is so brilliant because when you're watching it and this is i really watched it with from a director's point of view when i was doing watcher in the woods uh about that was about six years ago um because it's just a shot of like a, a diner Bar, countertop, right? Mm-hmm. With everybody kind of lined up and you keep hearing things like ding, order up and some, you know, or someone comes in the door and they're like, hey, Paul, you know, you hear these things, but they don't show them. Right. We don't do that anymore. We don't not show everything in a close up. We don't not pop over and be like, unless you're watching the Goldbergs. Like when I was directing the Goldbergs, I, oh, I almost had a moment, like a strike moment where I was like, oh, I'm not allowed to talk about that. You're allowed to. I am. <laughs> By the way, I had a total dream the other night that uh, I got an email from SAG saying all the things that I mentioned and being fined for <laughs> during the strike. Um, yeah, Worth your kids it. were dressed as Barbie during Halloween, so you're getting, no. But um, anyway, th- it's really interesting because we don't do that anymore, except for the Goldbergs, which there's like, there's what they call the Goldberg pop I think or Goldberg magic moment or something where like someone all of a sudden is in the scene and you don't carry them in from a doorway or down a staircase or they're just there and you're like how did mom get in the basement with the cookie tray I don't know she's just there but um they don't want to see like the feet walking in behind or anything like that and 
the birds, they, I mean, Alfred Hitchcock did that a lot of that, like, wide shots. Mm-hmm. And it's okay to play things on a wide shot. You still understand what's going on if you have the, you know, if the voices and the, the performances are right. And, you know, I, I don't know. It's an interesting storytelling technique, and I kind of love it. Oh, well, that's really fun. I'm glad you got to go to that and then you didn't have nightmares afterwards. I know. No, I did. Well, actually, ask our friends when we were leaving the movie theater. There was like a ah! sound and I went, oh, and they were like, you're OK. <laughs> it was a squeaky door or something. And I was like, oh, OK, OK. Well played. Kind of looking around. Regal and theater. Recently, I will. Uh, I'll, I'll see like birds on a wire. Like recently I saw and a ton of birds on a wire and I was like, well, trying every to get year video. in Nashville, we have like. I forgot what bird it is, but we have a major migration that comes through. And there's like three days where there's hundreds of thousands of this certain type of bird. I'm glad I know this now. Hopefully, maybe that's what's already happened this year. Okay. okay, It's in the fall sometime, but purple martin. martin. Oh, those are the kind that eat mosquitoes, though, right? Yes. Yeah, so that's a good kind to have around. Yes, but they're only here. I mean, it's literally like within three days and they all fly through. You we can actually find a way. see it on radar. Maybe we can make, really? Yeah. Maybe we can have them come through like mid-August when the mosquitoes are really bad and just let them like eat all the mosquitoes and move on. I think they're up north hiding out. Uh, this is why I put bat boxes all around my house because I want bats to eat all the I mosquitoes. I love bats. I, I do too. I have them living in my they're chimney. They're so cute. And they're like, <laughs> I just think they're so precious. I don't know if cute's the right word. Did you see there's a meat, there's a, a they're just little tiny Instagram like, going little around. Teeth. Did you see them? It's someone videotaped them upside down. Obviously, they hang uh, upside down. Yes, and it looks like they're at a, a hardcore show, and they're like, "Yeah, they're like dancing around." I think I sent you that. Like, Did you? <laughs> yeah, it's like it's black and white because it's yes. a nighttime video, but they're kind of like looking at the camera and they're like dancing. It's, it's hilarious. hilarious. I love it. I love Did that. Did you we see gotta... my ax- axolotl video yesterday? No, <laughs> it's this axolotl, and he's like dancing on bubbles. <laughs> is that a real thing? Yes, an axolotl is a real thing. Oh, no, is it really? Oh, Wait, Melissa. is this on your Instagram? Oh my! Yes, I don't go to know my these Instagram. Things. Look at my story. Wait, 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 wait. Am I going to? It's in your story. Yeah, you didn't send it to me as a. You always send me no. DMs. I don't. Do I do DMs. send you DMs. Everyone tries to DM me. I'm like, I don't do DMs. I just send you silly memes through DMs that Amanda only uh, that only relate to you and not in our. Like, hit my story. Story. There. It is. Oh, that's a real animal. Yeah. You're kidding me. Axolotls come from one place. Do you have one? No, I wish I did. My kids would love one, but Logan, since I brought home the third cat, has put in a very strict oh, No more heartbeats rule. in the house? Yeah, no more breathing yeah. things. So so shrimp are okay for Christmas still? You already gave me shrimp. I know, I got to give you more shrimp, I think. Georgia yesterday looks in the shrimp bowl and she goes, I don't think there's as many as there were. And oh, no. Like, are they cannibalizing themselves? Maybe. But you're not supposed to feed them. And there's like, I see algae on the rock, so I know that they have stuff to eat. Yeah. So I don't know. Uh-oh. But there's definitely You might some, be getting shrimp for Christmas. There's definitely some in there. I just don't know how many I started with and how many I have now. All right. What have you been watching? Oh, gosh. Okay. Right now, guilty pleasure watching is the new Frasier. Okay. Oh, I was never into the old Frasier. What? Yeah. Yes, I loved okay. the old Frasier. Um, it's... It's so good. It's cheese, but it's just happy, fun TV. It's like Big Bang Theory, though, right? No. Isn't it like dork humor? I mean, some of it is. Geek humor? So he's like this, like, hoity-toity sophisticate. Um, and he's teaching at Harvard. And, you know, he's Frasier. He's <laughs> yeah. just, like, full of himself, and it's fun. And But his instead of having Niles and his dad, like in the first one, now it's his son, Oh, okay. Freddie is grown up and he's a firefighter in Boston. So he's moved back to Boston to be close to Freddie. And it's just, he's the complete opposite of Frazier. Yeah. He's this like dude's dude. Yeah. And Frazier's like, how did I make this? <laughs> and it's this conflict of them loving each other so much, but being nothing alike. Yeah. And so it's really Interesting. fun. All it's right. cute. And um, I finished Only Murders I season three. I only started the first one. Oh. <gasps> I know, but I'm having a really hard time getting to shows and movies right now. Like, There's been a lot going on. I The only thing we did during the strike, really, Mark and I were able to agree on was Last Man on Earth, which is like a 2017. Funny enough, it's yes. about a pandemic hitting the world. But it's and, so funny. Everybody dies, though. Yeah, yeah everybody's <laughs> except dead for- except for him. And he writes, he goes around the country writing on billboards, like, Alive in Tucson. And then a woman shows, and he's like, he's, he's flirting with mannequins and stuff. Uh-huh. And he's like, hey, you, you look really good in that dress. Um... And like goes to take her hand or something and breaks the arm off or something. Yeah, he's and then living he, in a cul-de-sac in Tucson. Yeah, it's like he mansion his house. Yeah, and there's no electricity. There's no running water. He starts pooping in the pool. Yeah, he uses he cuts a hole in the diving board to poop in the pool. And so 
So then he he, finds a woman. This woman, January Jones, right? No, not January. First he meets um, the really funny, where was she from? Was it um, SNL? Oh, the girl from Flight of the Concords. Yeah, Flight Um, of the Concords. Kristen. And she is. um, Something. Yeah, but January comes in a little bit later. But Um, it's hilarious. Yeah, Kristen, Shale? Shale? I don't have my glasses on. Wait. Shaw. S- Shaw. Kristen Shaw. Yeah. Her. So oh glasses. she's hilarious. And then and then just as they're she wants to get married before they procreate and start to re- she's like, we're not gonna repopulate the earth with bastard children or whatever. And so they get married. <laughs> and the second they get married, January Jones pulls up. Uh-huh. And now there's this knock, you know, knockout woman on uh, on earth. And he tries everything he can to say, I have to procreate with both of you. But then um another guy shows up and she's like, Well, I'll take him. And he's like, Get it. And so, uh, and then two other women show up. It's it gets, Mary Steenburgen. And, yeah, it gets very conflicty. As, uh, yeah. As I, you go on. And like, it got to the point where I was like, ooh, I can't watch it. A lot of people show up. It seems like the casts are going to change each season. Like, he's going to move on to a different group or You'll something. You'll see. Okay. Yeah. okay. I don't want to ruin anything. All right. I'm only at the end of the first season. But yeah, that's something I've been watching. And then the other night, I watched Quiz Lady. I don't know Quiz Lady. I was looking it up before the show because you mentioned it. Yeah. I love Aquafina. I love Sandra yeah. O. Oh, yeah. So I well, know I have to watch it. What's now. fun with Sandra O oh is that she's like, you know, we know her from Grey's Anatomy as being like mm-hmm. a super serious, very sarcastic. She's very, actually really funny. She's really fun. And you know what? You can kind of you can tell that from somebody, right? You can find that from an actress. You could see that she she was the humor in Grey's Anatomy. Yeah. She was a, like you watched her because she was interesting and she was like Really she's self-deprecating, and, and yeah, yeah, and so she was brilliant in that. But she, um, she's even more fun in this. She's just like this spoiled. And it's on rat. Hulu and um, is it Netflix? I'm trying to look. It's where I'm having trouble pulling. I think up. I know. Oh it's yeah, on Hulu. Hulu. Yeah, Hulu. Um, but yeah, it's so fun. And Sandra O oh is amazing. Aquafina f- falls a little bit flat, but she's fun. She's like the nerdy sister who wants to be who watches the quiz show. She sets her alarm and watches this like Jeopardy type show every single day. And then she eventually gets on it. But Sandra O oh is her sister who is sort of like the rah-rah teenager that then becomes like the rah-rah adult who never really grows up and always has like a get-rich-quick scheme and moves in <laughs> and with And this is Aquafina's the scheme, character. right, to get the sister like, To get the sister to go. She's like, if you you know all these answers. Yeah, she starts like videotaping her to try to prove that she can answer all the questions. She, pr- she can answer all the questions. So she wants her on the show to get money. And actually, to be honest, I haven't finished it yet, so I'll tell you what happens well, next I've time. Well, I've heard there's I, everything I read was like that the ensemble is so good. Like there's the so many so people and that so make funny. appearances. And, yeah, and it really ropes you in. I mean, it's a great story premise. Did we ever get to talk about season two of The Bear? No, I haven't quite gotten through that either. Oh Guys, my I am gosh! Missing out. Do you know I never finished Handmaid's Tale, and I never finished The Great, and I'm very disappointed with and myself. I'm never finishing The Great. We've already talked I about know, that. No, but it's I want been. to. No, it is. I don't like giving up on things, guys. I'm very disappointed with myself. I need like this, you would think with the strike you're I would have all up this on holidays time. where you're going to be home with your people. A little I know bit you more. know what's hard is like the strike actually made it so that because I wasn't working, I didn't have structured time, and I was just like. You were everywhere. I was working my ass off on my family and my house and my, like, all that. Thanks. And I just, I was like, who I've am seen I? you less during this time where you've been forced not to work. Yeah. Than I ever saw you. It's weird. It's like I was <laughs> trying to create working. work while I wasn't working, right? I was trying to write scripts and, and produce and try to get things going so that when the strike was over. And now, of course, I have all these balls in the air and all this work happening. But um, <laughs> but it's it's kind of insane. But, uh, but yeah, I felt like I couldn't get control of my schedule while mm-hmm. I was on strike. It was very strange, but. It's so we, we we have to do our own questions real quick because it is now season nine of our show. Yeah, we're hundred episodes. Hundred episodes. Here we we're are. In season nine. We're here. We have new questions. We do. All right, you ready? I am ready. Uh, we only have a few. We've decided to cut it down because these usually take forever. And we're talkers. What's your hidden talent? We are. I didn't know that. What's your hidden talent? Do I have a hidden talent? <laughs> you can make a really great giant poppy. I can build These it. aren't hidden, though. Okay, the that's the thing. My hidden talent is is if I can see it in my head, I can build it. Yeah. It doesn't matter it's what true. it is. I can do that. Mine is that I can do baby doll eye. Um... <laughs> For those of you listening and not do it into the camera. For those of you listening and not watching, I just made my right eye go halfway down like a baby doll, and uh, it's yeah, it's kind of weird. That's right? whoa. And my, one of my best friends can do it too. Kim can do it out in LA. Um, uh, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think my hidden talent is probably um, tap dancing. I don't know. 
Well, everybody knows you can tap dance, though. Okay. I can tap dance. I can't really, though. But well, I kind of something can. you can do that nobody knows you can do. Besides, well, baby doll, it's definitely up there. I don't know. I've never seen that one before. I'm, I have a real talent for sleeping. Nobody ever sees me Same. do that. Yeah. We call it bed dwelling in my house. Oh, there you go. Saturdays are my bed dwelling day. Is that like you call me a drink goblin? A beverage, beverage goblin. goblin. You are. I am. That's a talent of mine, too. You should see how many drinks I walked in with today. <laughs> Usually it's at least three. <laughs> yes, at least three. Um. Yeah, that's, yeah, bed dwelling is a real talent. Of All right, favorite line from a movie. Well, I'm not here with these guys. I got a pig in competition down at the Livestock Pavilion, and I'm going to win that blue ribbon. What's that from? <laughs> I bet that you do. Oh, my gosh, of course it is. <laughs> That's funny. Um, mine is probably from, I've probably said this before. I feel like I've said this before. Better Off Dead um, with John Cusack, and he's um, he's a skier, and it's like an 80s movie. And, I mean, it's it's the one where he's like, I want my two dollars. He's getting chased by the paper boy wanting two dollars. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he's at the top of a mountain and he's skiing and he's with, um, what's his name? Booger from, uh, uh, you know, um, he, he was a big 80s uh, character actor. And um, and he's sitting there and and Booger, whatever his name is, is snorting um, snow crazy. off the top of his top hat. He always wears a top hat and he's snorting snow. He's like, like literally like, I mean, like it's cocaine. Oh, that's my alarm saying we need to go soon. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna set it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna hit the snooze. That's for terrifying. Nine more Why minutes. is it? A that's dog. a dog bark. That used to be my. That's my kids are getting done with school alarm <laughs> to let me know that I gotta go get the kids. Um. Anyway, he go, he he's he's and and John Cusack's standing on skis, like looking down this really difficult mountain, and he's kind of freaking out. And he's like, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. I don't know if I can do it. And Booger turns to him and goes, "Go that way, really fast. If something gets in your way, turn." And it's like, it just simplifies like life and everything that's like difficult. And like, it's true with skiing. It's like, go straight until you can't. <laughs> like, that's, that's actually not the way to ski. You really want to be turning to control your speed. But um, I wouldn't know. I yeah. failed ski class. <laughs> Did you? Pizza. No good for me. <laughs> but yeah, so that's my favorite line. That or he is also when he's when he's snorting the snow, he goes, he goes, oh, I think this is pure snow. I just froze the right half of my brain. Look, I can't move my left arm. Do you know the street value of this mountain? <laughs> he gets really excited about snorting everything, so he's snorting snow. Um, hype song. What's your hype song? Mm, okay, it changes frequently. <laughs> I can right imagine. now, it is, hang on. I don't think I can actually play more than a few seconds of it right legally. Is that right? Yeah. You probably just need to say it and maybe hum it. <laughs> no, but you got you to gotta hear it. Okay, okay so okay. It's, it's this gospel song. It's by the Voices of Fire, which Pharrell, I think, produced this. Oh, Ooh, that is so not like mine. It's like, mm, mm. the beat doesn't pop into it. Here's mine. <laughs> that's a good one. Sabotage Beastie yeah. Boys. That's a great one. Actually. I mean, that's that's a fun hype one. But I but actually, I think it might be Jay-Z Run This Town. Also a great one. Rihanna, right? Is you know Rihanna? the other one that really gets my like blood pumping and it, it just shows you what a bubblegum cupcake I am? That fight song? The Rachel Platten, the, this is my fight. Oh, really? And I'm like, yeah, it is. I'm in my car. <laughs> <laughs> my power's turned. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you're cute. Um, all right. What's our next question? Oh, <laughs> what, what would be your last meal? Oh. Mm. Okay. This food and me, we go way back. Yeah. You got to pick one. The very last thing you ever want to eat. Gosh, this is so hard. It has to be something involving cheese. Can I have numerous? Like, can I have like a New York bagel with an, like a New York salt bagel covered in cream cheese with like a New York pizza from Ray's Pizza on 10th Street? Like yeah. 10th Street and 6th Avenue. It's your last meal. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. King crab legs. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to yuck your yum. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> your dad was a lobster dude. Yeah, but crab legs. Yum. All the crustaceans, really. Yeah. But especially I do crab. like I crab's not my thing. Oh, I love crab. So king crab legs with champagne. Oh. And a lot of the butter. Are you going fancy? Oh, it's my last meal. Yeah, okay. And I'm then going pizza. <laughs> I probably want some like I, how big is my stomach? <laughs> some Mexican you have all day to eat cheese it. dip. Like queso, like queso dip, like white, yeah. like blanco. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want that on the on that's, the side. By the way, that's a very southern thing. Like you I know. don't have that in other places. Like California does not have white queso dip. It's, it's very bizarre. It's like really the cotillo, sad for what's them. It called? The cotillo cheese, I think. It's the melted cotillo. I don't know. 
I couldn't tell you, but I know it's delicious. It really is. And I used to come down to Florida for my birthday to have white queso dip on my birthday. And I know it's not like I've tried to make it myself. I've never been able to make it like the Mexican restaurants make it. Yeah. So I don't even try. There's an art to it, clearly. I just buy it. Um, So I want that. And then. (sighs) (laughs) Oh, you're going deep. You're you're allowed one thing. Okay, I changed my mind. You're not allowed to eat it all day. It's one thing you're allowed Fine. to eat all day. I'm ah. going with Ray's Pizza on 6th Avenue and 10th Street. Well, just because you're simplified doesn't mean that I have I know, to be. I know. It's you, my last you can, meal. You have some time. You can think about it. And my grandmother's hash brown casserole. Oh. Yes. There you go. What would your epitaph be while we're speaking about last meals? <laughs> we're going to go dark. Mm. I could either go really cliche with she left a little sparkle everywhere she went. Oh. Or... Oh, gosh. That's a good one. Have you thought about this before? I feel like you've yeah. thought about this before. Well, haven't you? Well, hey, okay, no, I so haven't. Here's the thing. But... I will never be in the ground. Do not put me in the okay, ground. I won't put you in the ground. We talked about this. Yes. Yes. Never bury I'm me. I'm not sure how I want to be. So I don't think I'll actually have like a gravestone. I think I want to be however the people behind want, you know, that I leave behind want me. <laughs> mm, I mean, I love them and I trust them with a lot. But like, don't put me in the ground. Okay. Like, I want to be My a firework. used to say that too. Put me in a firework, okay. shoot me off, shoot or me off. make a diamond out of me. You know what was a, you know what I would want? I would oh, which lighting. would be so appropriate if you did this. She left a little sparkle everywhere she went. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and now I'm a and diamond. you're a diamond. <laughs> or a firework. Same thing. Oh, but I like the idea of the Vikings, like where they put them on, on the wood, wrap them, you. and then like, and then shoot the fire, you know, yeah. shoot the bows and arrows with the fire and like, and it lands and wrap like starts me it on in fire. fireworks. And then... And then light you like, off in the middle. Like, I'll be the Put barge like, full of fireworks that goes off. That like, I don't know hilarious. if it's illegal. I'm sure they'll get stopped at some point, but maybe I'll already be burned by then. But, like, send me out in Lake Tahoe on, like, a yeah. raft of wood and then, like, light me on fire. Yeah. Yeah. yeah That'd I'm be cool fun. That. That'd be good. And then I would just what sink would to the bottom. What would your be? Oh, gosh. I, all I really want is a gravestone that people can visit with an angel, like, crying. I've always liked the Italian, like, crying angels. Do you want, like, the big one? Like, a, almost Yeah, like, like, where she's, like, looking down on the grave and she's, like, watching or she's, like, crying or, like, yeah. The ones I have you in, like, the Vatican. Sad that you're I want to be, like, a pope in the Vatican. <laughs> the big angel, like, weeping on my casket. Give me the big, mar- the biggest, marbliest <laughs> angel you got. Um, oh, this or that. All right, okay. let's do you, then we'll do me. Hard pants or soft pants? Soft. Go out or stay in? Stan. Barefoot or socks? Barefoot. Sleep in the buffer PJs. PJs. Hot tub or cold plunge? Hot tub. But I actually sauna. Saw so, oh. Like infrared? Yeah. Do you know last night our dear friend Danica McKellar was trying to convince my me to buy my husband a hot a cold plunge and an infrared sauna for Christmas. I was like, um That's a big Christmas. I don't know if you know there's been a strike. <laughs> 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 I haven't worked in a while. I am not getting that and by the way, we have a pool and a hot tub. I I got a great deal on my sauna. Um and it's like probably not like the world's greatest quality one, but it gets the job done wow. and it's lovely. I have I'll that little Thera gun for my face and it's got the red infrared on it. So it kind of like it's got a mm-hmm. percussion element to it, but it's also got mm-hmm. the infrared. So I feel like I'm getting the infrared on my face, which is really where I need it. I don't need it on my ass. This one time at Bargain Hunt. <laughs> <laughs> we just went from my ass to Bargain Hunt. I found. <laughs> Interesting. Well, you know, I love Bargain Hunt. So they have a section that's all like electronics and stuff. So this one day I'm in there and I'm just like browsing And I find this like unmarked box. I'm like, what is this? So I pull it out and inside is a medical grade red light therapy situation for like a med spa. Yeah. And it's got like the six paddles and you can kind of position them anywhere on your body you want. I got it for $32. I got home and I looked it up and it's like an $800 situation. You love those. You're good at those. Oh, here you've got to ask me that those were that's. Oh, here we go. Ready? Hard pants are soft. Soft pants. Go out or stay in. See, well, this all depends. Let's go back. Hard pants. I prefer jeans. To soft pants? Well, yeah, because I feel like I can wear, I always feel like I'm just lazy if I wear soft pants. So go on. Sorry. I take that back. Okay, hard pants. Ew. Go out or stay in. Go out. Barefoot or socks? Socks. Sleep in the buff or in PJs? PJs just in case there's a fire. Hot tub or cold plunge? Hot tub. That's I hate fair. the cold plunge. I've there gotten used to it. There were two others that we were going to ask and add to that list. Oh, yeah. Were Do they? you want me to look it up? Yeah. Hold on. We had them here from like a previous season. Hang on. Please hold. Please hold. Again, like at the beginning. Do-do. Oh, milkshake or icy? Oh. 
My milkshake brings all the boys to the yard. Definitely chocolate milkshake yeah. for me. Um, fries or onion rings? Oh, combination of no, both. No, I got to do onion rings. I hate fries. I don't hate them. They I, have to be just right and yes. the right temperature. I am not, and the right saltiness. I can live without fries. Brain cannot. Okay. Uh, the, uh, the man, I, uh, to get him to stay away from french fries is like... See, there are people that I know that just order french fries. I did that for the first time recently where I ordered a plate of french fries. Mainly because I was having a salad and I just felt like I needed to have some... Oh, there's the snooze button. <laughs> by the way. Um, so we've gone 12 minutes over the 12... Or 8 minutes or whatever. Yeah, 9 minutes over. Um, wait, but... Uh, I, onion rings have always been my favorite. I thing. love onion rings. But here's too. what I've decided. Like, as an adult, I'm like, okay, what things can I sacrifice in my diet for my waistline? Yes. Um, I think Fries if I'm going to go have pizza, it has to be warm. Not scalding hot and not, I will not eat cold pizza. It has to be warm. If it's not Who warm and gooey. Hurt you? If the cheese isn't warm and gooey, it's not worth it. Cold I don't pizza want hard is cheese. like a delicacy. Hard cheese is like eating cellulite. I don't want to eat what I know it's going to become. I want it gooey and soft and runny. I'm sorry. Like a dip, like a queso on top you of just the bread. You compared cold cheese to, to cellulite. cellulite. I feel like I'm eating someone's cold cellulite. Yes. So I prefer it warm and gooey, and I don't need french fries or donuts in my life because those are not things that make me happy. Okay. What I want is like a slice of blueberry pie or key lime cheesecake from the Cheesecake Factory. <laughs> I prefer those things. So I'll give up donuts so that when I go to Cheesecake Factory, I can have my cheesecake. Okay. That's fair. I can do without bread. Like, oh, I, I don't need bread. I did I like without bread. it for 10 years, and now I'm back to it. But I don't need it. I can give up French fries. Yeah, I can give up French fries. I'm not, however, giving up But I'm pasta. not giving up queso. Apparently, the other night after my juice cleanse, I went off on some queso. You guys, I had chicken. <laughs> I that you did a juice cleanse and <laughs> went to town on queso. The way I ended my juice cleanse was I didn't have the last juice, which was a cashew milk thing that you're supposed to have the last, uh, for, like for dinner. I didn't have it. And we were at the opening of Ice, which is incredible. Um, mm -hmm. It's Polar Express this year here at the Opryland, Gaylord Opryland uh, Mills Hotel Mall thingy. And it's incredible. But we were there. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to eat. And I was really hungry. Three days of not, eat, not eating solid foods. I was like, I'm really hungry. So the, I was going to get the hummus and veggies, which would have been the right choice. But the waiter convinced me. I said, well, how's this ch ch uh, chicken buffalo? Buffalo flavor is my new favorite thing. But I way. love it. I've just discovered this. It's the vinegar in it. That's probably why I like it. Mm -hmm. I always thought it was going to taste like barbecue. And I hate mm -hmm. barbecue flavor. No. So I w saw that it was chicken buffalo dip. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And he goes, you have to get that. And I got it. And... I could not stop eating it. It was a lot of shredded chicken, so I felt good about that. But I was like, I am going to have the worst stomach ache. Yeah, but yeah. I have been dreaming about it ever since. And someone just told me I can get it at Trader Joe's. And now I'm screwed. Oh. Now, Amanda, I'm screwed. I Yeah. You like, can pretty much anywhere has it. The Trader Joe's one's oh. very good. And I'm the, so scared for my life The Publix right version is really good, too. I'm really scared. I'm sorry. This is going to be bad for me, you guys. <laughs> anyway, this has been fun. 100th episode, you guys. We'll we have a party. It. We got to have a party. We're gonna play, I'm planning a party. Let's do it. Maybe we'll hold a contest and maybe we'll bring in like a listener. And then well, that'd be fun to our party. Yeah. That would be really fun. Let's bring in some listeners. We can do a live event too. We got the holidays coming up. Everybody check out the worldvision.org gift catalog mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and check out Jingle Smells. Jingle Smells. Thanksgiving Day on Rumble. Go back and watch Would You Kill For Me If You're Not Feeling Christmassy Yet <laughs> on Lifetime <laughs> or wait until January and then watch it. Um, yeah, and all the things. And we'll, we'll be back next week with Christmas Eve. We can finally talk again. We can talk again. I think we're going to have some really fun guests on, you guys. We're going to have some great Christmas guests. And we're going to have tons of fun talking about all the binge-worthy things again. Yay! Yay! Happy 100, everybody! Womanette binge! Womanette binge!